How's it going? This is James from James Films, and I just wanted to thank you all so much for the incredible support over the past couple months on this channel. You've really inspired me to keep making tutorials. I know I've been a little bit slow lately with putting some stuff out. I always forget to hit that record button when I start making a piece in Blender, so I try to remember uh, as much as I can to kind of get my process recorded to share with you guys. This is one I've been wanting to make a lot because the response I got to my last Sandy Room tutorial was phenomenal. I mean, we're almost at about 100,000 views last I checked. I, on a daily basis, am getting tagged in some incredible projects that you guys are putting together based on the tutorial. So that is really inspiring for me to see personally. I just really, you know, it, it feels good to give back to you guys, the community that raised me and, you know, taught me how to learn 3D software. So it means a lot. Your support is awesome. And this is a kind of a, a follow-up to that Sandy Room tutorial that I wanted to put together. It's a little bit more uh, involved. We're going to do a bit of modeling. We're going to do a little bit of uh, more complex texturing, kind of blending a couple textures together. And we're going to make a really cool, surreal looking environment. So once again, I just wanted to start with talking about this slide from the sand filled environments, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking for uh, to create and also to kind of root you in realism as well with this. So when we're actually creating environments, I always think it's important to work off of references. You might think you know what sand in a room looks like, but uh, you know, it, it's a lot more complex than you might think it is. There's a lot of little bit of details and stuff that you might want to pick up on uh, to add in. Just how does sand collect in a room? You know, how does a room look after, you know, many, many months of, of just kind of being, you know, abandoned maybe? Well, what kind of, you know, footsteps or, or kind of patterns are you going to be seeing in the sand? What kind of vegetation is going to be there? What's the, what are the walls going to look like if there's going to be erosion? Whatnot. I mean, these are all stylistic things that you can choose as well as a creator, but you want to ground those choices generally in reality and work off of references. So I picked a couple images here. These are ones I showed in the last tutorial just to kind of give you a bit of uh, an idea of what we're going for. Since I made that sand field tutorial, I've had a lot more practice actually making sandy environments of my own for my Instagram page. Follow that if you're not already. I've been working on developing my skills for this, and I wanted to kind of share with you some of the new tips and tricks that I've picked up over the past couple of months of, of doing this kind of work. So what are we going to be making today? We're going to be making a render that is similar to the one that you're seeing here. This one was actually made in Cinema 4D, just because I've been kind of playing around in that software a bit more. It's a lot of fun as well. Uh, my heart is always with Blender still, uh, so I'm trying to do as much in Blender as possible, especially for these tutorials. Uh, since it is a free software, a lot more accessible to you as a new user in 3D, let's work in Blender today. Uh, so we can actually make this in Blender very easily. And I'm going to walk you through the process. But to get to that process, we're actually going to need a couple ingredients. And then these are all free. I'll just put that out there. Download link is in the description. I have them all linked there. You can just go one by one, download them to your computer, uh, and we can get started. So the first three that you're going to need are textures from the royalty-free site CC0 Textures, a fantastic resource for creators. Just tons and tons. You can see here uh, 1,291 assets as of writing this video. Uh, a lot of great textures there that you can download and use in a number of different resolutions. And just a note about texture resolutions, you don't want to necessarily go for the 8K one because you're going to add a lot of memory to your scene when you're bringing in these large images that you're working off of. You know, I'd recommend 2K or, or 4K if you've got a little bit more uh, RAM to work with. Uh, for your scenes, I'm using 4K for this, uh, but you're not going to really need much above there unless you're having incredibly detailed close-up shots. And for this one, we're kind of at a mid-range, you know, a wide angle exposure or wide angle shot of this scene. So we're going to need like a 2K or 4K. So I've linked these again in the description. We're going to be using the wood floor 40, the ground 27, which is kind of this sandy uh, surface that you see here. And then this kind of plaster wall concrete 24. Uh, so those are the three that you're going to need for this render. We're also going to want to use an HDRI for uh, giving us a general lighting and a bit of color splash to our scene as well. I always for my lighting work off an HDRI just because it gives me a nice starting point to build off my lighting setup. For this one, we're going to be using a free HDRI, HDRI Sky 468, very specific, <laughs> from the website HDRI Sky is also linked in the description as well. Head on over, download that. And again, you don't need the highest resolution for these guys, uh, especially with HDRIs. They can add a ton of uh, lag to your scene if you're rendering a, a, just a mass of like 16K or uh, HDRI. So you don't really need to go crazy. And we're not even going to be seeing the HDRI. I'm going to be turning this off for the render. So just forget about it. It's okay. We'll be fine. Um, and then lastly, we're going to be using a sky that is uh, taken from one of my favorite places in the entire universe. It is the Calonque National Park in the south of France. Beautiful place if you've never been there before. Hidden gem on the Mediterranean Sea. Absolutely stunning. 
Uh, this photo is from Clément. He's captured this pretty beautifully here. And what I like about this in particular is just the really nice uh, light that's kind of scattering off of the Mediterranean Sea here. And you've got this nice atmospheric haze here. This is going to be really great for us to work with and kind of add that nostalgic dreamy effect. This one is royalty free from the fantastic site Unsplash. Great for Photoshop users, but also great surprisingly for 3D users as well. So we're going to be downloading this one as well, also linked in the description. So let's get to the scene. So I'm just going to start a new Blender file here. So let's just start new and we've got this default scene. And before I even begin, I always forget to do this and someone always reminds me in the comments and I always appreciate that, but I always feel bad not activating these screencast keys. I'm going to turn that on now for you to see that in the left corner of my screen. It's going to be important. I'm going to be using a couple hotkeys for here. So I'm going to take it nice and slow. You can slow down. You can pause if you need to at any moment here to take it all in and see which keys I'm using for the scene. And that'll all be displayed over there on the left. So just because I like to torture you guys, I'm going to leave the default cube in here for now. <laughs> we'll come back to it later. I'm just going to hide it from my viewport. We're going to be starting with the actual sandy surface here. Uh, the one that I was kind of showing in that scene, that like kind of hardwood floor. So what am I actually going to do is add in a plane. And I'm just going to scale this up, let's say by like five, eh, maybe a little bit more. Let's fill it up a little bit more here. And what I'm going to do is actually add a little bit of geometry to this because we're going to be displacing this uh, for the sand surface uh, that's going to be underneath here. So what I'm going to actually do is switch over to textured mode here. And I'm going to bring up the shader editor from the bottom and change this from timeline to shader editor. I'm going to add in a new material and let's just call this the sand plus wood floor. Let's give our plane a name here. We'll call this the uh, wood plane plate plane. Let's just call it wood plane. And what I'm actually going to do, if you have the node wrangler add on enabled, and if you don't already have that, just go to edit preferences, add ons, and just type in a node wrangler, enable that guy. If you've got that enabled, what you can do is actually set up a principal texture setup by just hitting on your principal BS. Don't have the uh, material output selected, just select your principal BSDF node and then hit control shift and T. Uh, just navigate to wherever you've downloaded your texture. So for this one, I'm going to start, let's say with the wood floor one. So I have my wood floor saved out to, where are we? Wood floor. So I'm just going to grab these four here. And I'm just going to, while I'm here, just copy this folder address and let's just hit principal texture setup. And what that does is it nicely connects in all of our nodes here with an, a mapping node, actually, all kind of organized nicely and neatly. I'm just going to take this one step further and actually uh, just select all these guys and hit Control J to add them to another box here. And we're going to call this frame uh, the wood floor. So that's going to be our floor there. I just like to kind of do this just to kind of keep track of my nodes, especially when you're adding a ton of things in there, it can kind of get complex. And we'll give this like a woody kind of brownish color. So now you can see our texture just is displaying on our uh, little plane here. I actually kind of want to rotate this, rotate this. So I'm going to have uh, it be rotated 90 degrees. I'm just going to open up the UV editor. Let's just UV unwrap this guy. Just UV unwrap it. Just so we have that. And it's already done our work for us. It's actually already flipped it, but this is looking a little bit too large. I kind of want these tile or the wood planks to be a bit smaller here. So we have a bit more of them in the scene. So I'm just going to turn off overlays for a second here so I can see this better. And let's just hit S and three and you'll see a bit of tiling, but that's not really uh, a big deal. Like these two big seams here, you kind of see those uh, pretty clearly tiling, but we're not going to really notice that once we actually add in the, the dune to this as well. So right now we're just working with just these wooden planks, but I actually want to bring in the sand to this as well. And the way I'm going to do this is actually click on slot one and hit the plus icon. This adds us to this other queue here. And I just like to queue up my second textures in here. I just find it a bit uh, cleaner to work with that way. And we'll just call this one sand, just because we're going to be reusing this texture again as well. Uh, so I'm just going to do the same thing as before. Hit control shift and T. And I'm going to navigate over to where I've stored my sand ground texture. And I'm going to select everything here except for that displacement, because I'm going to be using that a bit later. I like to add in my displacements in a different spot. So we've got this sand here. I'm going to frame it up again as well, and we'll call this sand. We'll give it a nice yellowish color here for sand. So you're not currently seeing it because it's queued up in slot two, and we're just using slot one for our render. So I'm actually going to select all this, hit control C, go back to slot two, and just hit control V and paste that in there. Now you see we've got this sand frame here. I'll drag it down so it's uh, down here. And how we're going to actually be able to see the sand on our plane here. 
So if I just would plug this in, you can just do this by hitting uh, control and then shift the clicking on the node for here. Now you see we're actually showing just the sand and not the wood. But I want to have both of these show up. And the way to mix textures is by using something called a mix shader node. So I'm going to plug this in to this node output here, and I'm going to drag in from the sand and plug it into the second shader output here. And what you're now seeing is a perfect 50-50 mix of these two textures here. So if you look closely, you can actually see the wood planks. We're kind of being dominated just by the sand just because it's a brighter texture, it looks like, in relation to the wood. But you're seeing both of them on top of each other. And we actually want to be able to control this. Uh, and you could do this a couple different ways. You could add in like a, a noise shader to this factor here. So let's just kind of show you what that looks like here. Let's add a noise texture, click the factor into factor and take a second to load. But now you see it's kind of controlling where uh, just based on like a noise output. So let's just control click on this guy, control shift click on this guy rather. So you'll see this is the noise texture that it's applying. And the dark areas are applying to the uh, texture below. And then the white areas are the texture above. Um, so in that case, it's the sand one, which is our, our second shader in here. It's, it's kind of applying for those white areas and the darker regions are applying uh, the first shader in our input, which is that wood one. So bear with me, this is a little bit complex, but we're actually going to use a method that's been laid out by another YouTuber really well. Uh, it's actually using something called Vertex Color. And if you want to learn a bit more about that, I've linked his tutorial in the description here. It's a really great one to follow and goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to be covering with this one. I'm just going to be kind of showing you the process here very quickly, but it's a really fun one. I use this a lot for blending things together. So let's click on our plane again here, just so we have it selected and go to this like thing you see that looks like a triangle. So we'll click on that triangle and you have a couple of different menus here. We've got vertex groups, shape keys, UV maps. And you've got one called vertex colors. And right now we don't have any uh, loaded in here. So just click the plus icon and that's now added a new vertex color. So we're currently not using that. But let's go over to our shader editor here and actually add in a vertex color node so we can actually make use of this map we're about to add in here. In this little region here, you can click on it and just select that color node that we just created. And we're going to try to plug this into the mix shader. And in order to do that, I'm going to be using this color output, but we need to actually feed this into a separate RGB node to just isolate the red values of this and plug that into our factor. So I'm going to plug the color into this image here. And now you're seeing, we're seeing just 100% of the sand here. We actually want to be able to mix the sand with the wood planks. And in order to do that, we're actually going to go over to the vertex paint mode. And I'm going to click on this white color here that you see that. Go to the RGB, pull down on green and blue. So we're just isolating the red. Click paint and then set vertex colors. You're not currently seeing anything because we're on material editor, but we switch back to the viewport shading. You now see that our entire plane has been colored red. So in order to actually show some of our wood texture, let me pull this over here and change this to the material editor. So now you see we're seeing both again, or we're just seeing the sand again here. We want to actually have some wood planks underneath there and probably in the middle section kind of as a leading line. In order to do that with our brush selected here, you can uh, control this brush fall off by the way, by hitting F and pulling it up. That's rescaling our brush F and then pulling your mouse to the left, scales it down. And to change the fall off of this, you can hit shift F and it pulls the fall off up and down. So we're right now just using this at one. There's no fall off. This is uh, just entirely fall off, but I kind of like to go somewhere in between. Let's go for like a 0.7, something like that. And if you just paint on this right now, we're just painting red, but there's a little shortcut that we can use. If you hold down control and then paint, now you're seeing we're revealing some black below here. And if I pull off again, we'll see something interesting has happened. Now we're actually seeing the wood planks beneath the sand here. And there's this kind of nice fade between the sand and the wood. Whereas if you were to just kind of do this uh, naturally, it would just kind of show this really harsh fall off. So by doing this vertex paint mode, you can actually add in some really interesting things and kind of make the scene look a lot more interesting. So I'm just gonna kind of put a, a bookmark in this for now and we'll come back to this in a second because I actually wanna duplicate this plane and we're gonna call this one the sand dune here. Let's rename this the sand dune. Just because I like to operate with the displacements on a separate plane here, I just think it works a little bit better for the purposes of this. What I'm going to actually do is just delete this texture from our sand dune and just add in just the sand one here. So now we're just seeing the sand here. What I want to actually do is open up the sculpt mode 
And what we're going to be doing is pulling up the edges around the corners here so that it looks like there's a bit of like sand that's accumulated in the room of Sandy Places IRL. You'll see that sand seems to kind of have accumulated in the corners of rooms and kind of slopes down a little bit at entrances where maybe wind has been blowing through and kind of pushing it to the sides. So we're going to try to emulate that effect and keep in mind we're trying to have this window in the left corner of this room here. So I'm going to have the sand accumulating to the left and right of that. And you can just kind of pull up with the uh, normal draw brush. What I actually like to use a lot more is this inflate brush. I just think that works a bit better. Personally, you have got a pretty good amount of control over what you're doing here. It's looking pretty interesting. You kind of have a little bit of accumulate there maybe. And we'll kind of pull up a bit more here and here. We can always just hit shift and kind of smooth this out a bit. But we've kind of got this nice thing here where we're actually able to see a bit of the sand accumulating in these corners. And we can always come back and revise this later, but this is a good start. I'm going to go back to object mode and shade this smooth. So you're seeing this is looking much more interesting now, but we're actually kind of losing a bit of that wood plane below. So I'm just going to pull this guy up, the wood plane up a bit. And you can see it's looking pretty harsh. You can see this really harsh edge here. So let's fix that by once again going into the vertex paint mode with our wood plane selected. And let's just hold down control and add in some sand to those edges there to kind of smooth this guy out a bit. And this is looking a bit better. Oops, I'm realizing that I have this flipped from how I want it. So actually, you want to reverse these shaders. And you can see that it is now painting with that one in the middle. We don't want that actually. Let's go back here. Sorry about this. That makes a bit more sense there. But I actually want to uh, pull some of this red back in there. And so we'll have this looking a bit more sand accumulated there. And we'll just have the black for the wood tiling in the middle. That's looking a bit more realistic. Got a nice fade to it going here. It's looking pretty good. So we'll leave that for now. Okay, so we've got a pretty nice scene going here. You can see we've got a nice fade in general. We can kind of come back and maybe revise this a bit more to add some more sandy patches in the middle here, but this is a good start to work off of. So I'm gonna bring back in that default cube and we're actually gonna to start to make the room for this here. So if I hit seven on my numpad and go to the top down view, tab into edit mode, and we're just gonna hit uh, S and then shift Z to kind of scale our rotation or our, our scale just along the XY plane. So now we've got that going. Um, oh, I realized I didn't have everything selected here. Let me just select all shift Z. Oh, let's go to top view shift Z and then we'll pull it all over. So we're now uh, encapsulating this entire room. I can uh, tab into edit mode again, click on just the top face, hit G and just pull this guy up here. And what I'm actually going to do is take out this wall here so we can actually see into our scene. So that looks pretty good. And let's actually define a camera angle while we're at it right now. So with this view selected over here, I'm going to hit Control, Alt, and Zero. It's going to snap my camera to that viewpoint. I'll change the dimensions to 1200 by 1500 because I think that plays generally pretty well with Instagram. So now we've got this interesting viewpoint here. If I click on my camera, pull this over here, we can actually change it a bit more by going into Item and adjusting the rotation. Sometimes it adds a little bit of Y rotation, which I do not want. So I'm just going to go to that. Let's make this uh, 35 millimeters instead of 50. So we're seeing more of that room. And that is pretty good to me. We've got this kind of interesting scene. Maybe we pull up the ceiling just a little bit more. We've got some pretty lofty ceilings in this place. That looks pretty decent to me. And yeah, so this is a pretty good start. I'm going to just switch over into my rendered mode here for a second as we're going to start to just add in a splash of light just to see what we're working with here. If I just hit uh, render region, it's not going to render anything outside of that. So we're just seeing inside our cube here and it's all quite dark. So to change that, we're going to add in our environment texture that I had you guys download before. I'm going to load that in there and now we've got some basic lighting. I'm going to crank up the strength here to let's say five. And now you can see our scene is starting to work and it looks pretty cool. We got some interesting effects going on right here, but our sand is pretty flat as you notice. So what is going on with that? Well, keep in mind, we actually don't have any displacement beyond what we just did with our sculpting. So we're going to want to add in a little bit of displacement to this guy. So I'm going to click on our sand dune plane, go to the modifiers tab, add in a subdivision surface to give a little bit of geometry. Let's just up the levels in the viewport to two. If your computer can handle that, it's fine. If you can't, it's just, just to give us a general idea of what these sand dunes are going to look like. And what I'm going to do is actually open up the folder where I've saved out that ground texture. And I'm going to hit Control C. So we've copied that. And we're going to go to our displace modifier, add a new displacement modifier onto this. 
switch the coordinates from local to UV. So we're using that UV that we unwrapped there. Click on these little sliders, and now we can actually open up our image. So I'm going to open up our ground displacement map, which just had some interesting dunes to You can see it's way too displaced here. Uh, you know, the sand is usually not that steep. So let's pull back the strength a bit to something like 0.3 and see how that looks. It's maybe still a little bit too excessive. We can pull that back a bit more here. And you can see we're actually losing a bit of our wood in the middle. So what I can do is now go, let's just turn down the levels of the port down to one so we're not lagging too much. Go to sculpt mode on this guy and let's just kind of push this down. Uh, you can use the inflate brush by holding uh, shift down and, and pushing it down that way. Or we can just use the flatten brush here and kind of pull things around. There's a number of different ways you can do this. Just kind of experiment around here and see which brush works best for your purposes to kind of depress this guy down a bit more. I kind of just experiment around with things generally just to see what works and what doesn't to kind of push our scene down a bit. This is struggling a little bit here, so I'm just going to pull this down naturally this way here. And so that's working a bit better. Let's add in our point two back for the viewport. So this is looking pretty decent. So we've got our, our general scene set up here. But I'm going to take this a step further and let's actually start to add in some of those details like, you know, the, the crown molding to the top here and also those windows and doors. So for now, I'm going to switch back out of rendered mode to viewport mode. And let's just make the windows on the scene first here. So I'm going to switch to seven on my numpad so we can see top down. We're going to add in a cube and drag this over the side for now. I'm going to tab into edit mode, scale this along the X so that it's, you know, about that height. We can always rescale this. Just go back down here. It's a little bit too wide. Let's just scale this down to something like that. And now that I'm happy with that, let's maybe scale it up a little bit more. Kind of have this to your liking here. I'm just going to shift D and duplicate this one, pull it over to the right. I'm going to call the first one my door, and the second one is going to be the shutters for the door. And that one I'm going to maybe scale inward just a little bit, so it's a little bit smaller. So that works just fine for me. So I'm going to uh, put on the see-through x-ray mode here, this x-ray mode, so you can actually see through everything. And what I'm going to do is go to face select and just select both of these guys. Oops, it's struggling a bit here. And there we go, select both the faces and hit I to inset. So I'm gonna pull these inward there. And then I'm going to go down here. Let's see how this is looking. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Let me just inset this once more a little bit and we can pull this down uh, just a hair. Oops, let's just select this top one here. I'll go out of X-ray mode for a second here. I'm going to select this top guy and just pull it down just a little bit here. So now we've kind of got this little bit of indentation to it. We'll just do another eye and pull it in just a little bit more again and pull this down just another bit more just by going GZ. And that's looking pretty decent to me. I'm just going to delete that face and I'm going to uh, go to top view and we're just going to inset this face and just kind of scale it down so that's where our last one is and delete it out. So now we've got this kind of door frame to it, but you'll notice there's some gaps here in the top and side corners here. So I'm just going to go to edge select mode and zoom into where that edge is. It's this guy right here, and I'm going to hit alt and then click on it. And that's going to select this whole ring. And I'm going to not want to actually do that. I actually just want to select just this guy here. So let's just click on that one, click on a uh, shift and select the one below it. Hit F to fill it in. So we've now got this filled in. Do the same deal here. Grab these edges. Is that the right one we want? It is not. It's all kind of a push and pull here with the modeling. This is pretty crude modeling. So it's kind of all right here. Oh, that is the right one. Okay, perfect. So we'll select those ones and fill it in. Just hard to keep a track of where these edges are when you're filling these in. There you go. We're filled those in. So now we don't have that gap anymore. Go over here and I'm going to click on this guy and fill it in. This is just so that we don't have that weird like hole in the model. So now everything's filled in. You can see it all looks solid. And just to add a little bit of interest, let's go to this outer ring that's here. And that's the one we're going to be hitting Alt and, uh, Alt and clicking on it. So it selects this entire ring. And you can hit Control and B to add a bit of bevel to this. Just add a slight bit of bevel just so that it's uh, kind of interesting. You don't need to scroll up at all. We can just kind of have it as one. So we've got a bit of slope to it now. So it's got a bit more detail to it. Maybe I want to just scale this down just a little bit on the Z so it's not too crazy. And so that's looking pretty cool to me. Let's place this in our scene now. 
so if I go to, uh, if I hit R and then Y and then 90, it's going to flip it up on the, the uh, Y axis there. I can hit three on my numpad, so I'm looking at the side view. And we're going to want to hit GZ and pull this up so it's in line with the Y axis and G and Y and pull this over into our scene. I just want to push this up just a little bit so that base there is not clipping through the floor. So looking, that's looking good. I'm going to hit G and X and push this back into the wall. And I'm noticing that this is a little bit too small here. So I'm just going to have to scale this up, but I'll leave that there for now. So it's looking okay in our scene. And I'm going to focus on the shutter for now. So for the shutter, I want to have kind of a bottom part to it and then have kind of like this top edge as well. So I'm going to go to top down view mode as well. And I'm just going to hit oops, top view and hit control R while you're in edit mode. And this adds a loop cut, just click. And then you can drag this down. I'm just going to drag this down maybe about a third of the way down here. So this is one third of the way down and just hit click. So now we've added a new loop cut. Go back to face select mode, click on this face. We're going to inset this guy here. I'll zoom in a bit more so we can see our, our detail a bit better here. And let's maybe snap out of this camera so we can see it from this side view here. Turn back on overlays. So it's just helpful to have multiple views here so you see what you're working with and kind of go back and forth between the two. So now in this view, I'm going to uh, pull this guy down a little bit here. Let's first extrude it and then pull it down on the Z axis. Move that down. Inset that guy again. And this time I'm going to pull it up a bit here. We'll inset it again. And let's, let's see, pull it down maybe. It's kind of just modeling this off of you know the little trinkets that you see around your house um so you can kind of reference some images for this just to see because they have this interesting kind of pattern like oftentimes like a bit of like crown molding or something to it and let's maybe like give this guy a little bit of a bevel too actually let's not this looks fine so you kind of got this like interesting pattern to it there like a bit of like a crown molding type of deal going on there and so for this top part i actually just want to uh, add in one more loop cut. So I'm going to look from the top of the mode again over here. And we'll add in one more loop cut. And this time I'm going to put it up a little bit higher here. So that looks pretty good. And then this entire top part, I'm actually going to go into x-ray mode here and select both those faces and then hit inset. I to inset it and we'll pull this down a bit. And let's just delete both of those faces. Same deal as what we did before. We just need to fill those gaps. I'm going to go out of x-ray mode, go to edge mode. And just click on those edges, top and bottom, and then hit F to fill them in. Uh, it's just uh, what you have to do here, just so you don't have the gaps like I was talking about. And so now I want to actually make the shutter part of this. So we've got the kind of the door aspect to it, but I want to have those like little shutters that were in between here. And to do that, I'm just going to add in a, a cube, a very basic perimeter shape here. I'm going to G and Y and drag this guy over. Let's go to top mode so we can see, line it up properly. Uh, let's just scale this in the X so it's nice and thin and scaled inward on the Y axis here. It's pretty large there, so let's pull it down on the Z. And so now we've got our shutter, but let's add a little bit more detail to this. So what I'm actually going to do is select these front two edges here, hit control B, and let's give this a pretty big bevel. Kind of give this a nice smooth out bevel there. Shade smooth and you notice this looks kind of strange. And if it's looking kind of strange, click on that triangle again, go down to normals and hit auto smooth. And this kind of just uh, smooths it out a little bit better based on the angle that you provide. So I'm going to go with 30 degrees and that's looking a bit better to me. Maybe it's a little bit too chubby. So let's kind of scale this in a bit there. And that is looking pretty good to me. So instead of duplicating this and putting it all along, let's actually use an array modifier and we can space this out a bit nicer and rotate them so that it's it's actually looking kind of interesting here. So I'm going to pull this along here, add in a couple more of these guys so that they completely fill my model. Go to this first one and then I'm just going to rotate this on the Y. So now we've got some interest to it. So I'm seeing I might need to add a couple more to them. Let's just add in a couple more like that. That's looking pretty good to me. And we've got kind of this interesting shade looking effect to it. Looks pretty cool, but maybe let's add a little bit more detail to these sides here. I'm going to select these faces here and I'm just going to inset them and just kind of pull them out a bit here on the Y axis and let's just bevel them. Oops, that's looking kind of funky. Oh, and one quick note about that, actually, when you're insetting two faces at the same time, what you should probably do is select both of them and then go to face, extrude faces along normals, and this allows you to extrude them both inward or outward. So I'm going to want to pull these ones inward just a slight little bit there and I'm going to uh, bevel them just so that they're kind of a bit more detailed. And so that's looking pretty cool to me. 
so we've got a nice scene here, a nice little door here. And I'm just going to apply that array modifier to our guy here. And with the shutter selected and hit shift select on this guy, you can now join them by hitting control and J. So now we've got this model. I'll call this the shutter. And we've got our shutter and our door. And the same deal, I'm just going to bring this guy over into my scene. First, rotate it on the Y axis. And we're just going to pull this over so that it is to uh, the left of my door here. And let's go back to camera mode for here. Okay, so that's looking a little bit off. It's a pull and push here, guys. We're going to put this back here. It's looking good to me. Yes, looks good. A little bit low poly door, but it's all right. You know, it's the details aren't too essential for this guy. I'm just going to select both of these ones and uh, let's just scale them up a bit just so it's a little bit larger. Scale up just a little bit more. It's a little bit small there. So it's looking a bit better. Maybe I just scale this like vertically. All right, let's go into edit mode and just scale it on the Z axis, bring it up a bit here. It's looking decent to me. And this guy will do the same thing. Just select everything scaled up on the Z axis, bring it up here. And that is looking decently good to me. So let's just duplicate this door and bring it over on the Y axis. And I'm going to duplicate the shutter and bring it over on the Y axis as well. So our scene's starting to come together a bit now. It's looking pretty nice. But first, I actually need to cut out this hole from the wall. And if I were just to try to do this naturally, uh, we'd run into an issue. I just deleted this bottom face, by the way, uh, from the cube, uh, just because we already have the floor in there. So what I'm actually going to do is solidify this first, because you're going to run into all kinds of errors if you're going to try to use a Boolean cube to knock out this back wall. Uh, so to actually knock out the back wall, we do need a cube. I'm going to add in a cube, go to three, and line this up properly with that door. Uh, let's just pull this guy over a bit. I'm noticing the door is a little bit off kilter here. So let's just center this guy up a little bit OCD here, but it's all right. You know, we want to have our dimensions looking good. Okay. So that's all centered pretty much. And I'm just going to scale this cube on the Y, bring it over a hair, scale a little bit more. And let's just scale it up on the uh, Z axis there by hitting G and Z and pulling that guy up, pull this over just a little bit more. And so now we've got something we can cut our door out with. But to actually cut out our door, let's click on our main room cube. I'm going to rename this to the room. Great movie, by the way. And we're going to add in a solidify modifier to this. And if you start to pull up the thickness, you'll notice that the walls are closing in on themselves, like in Star Wars. You don't want that. You want it to not be getting trash compacted. We want to actually be going outward. So the issue we're running into here is an issue of normals of this cube. So if I tab into edit mode, select all these guys and go to face. Uh, oops, sorry, to mesh, actually mesh and then go down to normals and just flip them. It just flips our normals on this guy. And to actually see what that looks like, you can go, uh, where is it? It's not the back face calling. I always forget where it is. It's somewhere located over here. There's somewhere you can see like where the normals are actually located, but now we're having them flipped uh, the proper way. So if I go over here to the solidify and start to scale it up, you see it is scaling outwards, which is exactly what we want. That's great. And now this actually allows us to cut out the hole with this cube here. So I'm going to add in one more modifier on top of this guy, the Boolean modifier, and we're going to select that inner cube there. We can now hide this from our viewport and our render, and you see we have a hole. We've cut out a hole from our, our viewport here. And if I go to render mode now, you'll see we have light coming into our room, which is beautiful and lovely. We love to see it. Uh, so let's switch over to the world settings here, because I want the light coming in from the window. You can see it's actually hitting from maybe somewhere over on this right side here, which I don't want. So with the HGRI selected, hit Control T if you've got that Node Wrangler add-on enabled, which we enabled earlier, uh, if you remember. And I'm just going to rotate the Z around here so that you're actually seeing it responding in the viewport. And if you have denoising, you can turn that on. It just kind of speeds up so you're not looking through noise all the time. Let's just kind of rotate this around, you know, so it's kind of coming through our window. We're getting a bit closer. It's kind of coming through the wall there. Let's rotate a little bit more so it's hitting that, that wood floor. That's kind of our focal element. Here, it's looking decent. Uh, seemed like it was around 170, maybe is where we want it. And maybe we kind of tilt this down a bit. So it's coming through a bit more and that's looking really good. So now you see that we got this really nice beam coming through here. I'm just gonna hide the background because it, it looks really strange. Now we're looking at like sand. Um, so just go over to your render properties tab here and you can go down to film and click on transparent that hides our background from the viewport, which we don't want to see for this guy. It's perfectly fine. 
So this is a good start to lighting. We've got a nice splash of color here on our scene, but I want to take this a step further. And what I always do is add in a lamp and I'm going to be adding in a sun lamp for this one. And this just allows me a little bit more control over the lighting. It allows me to add a little bit more lighting to the scene as well to really make it pop a lot more. So I'm going to add this in here and we're going to go and go to our strength of the sun. Let's just crank this up to something like uh, 20 is maybe a bit too much. Let's go to 10 for now and add a little bit of a, a kind of an orange hue to it to kind of match the HDRI a bit more. And that's looking really nice. I like how that looks. We're adding some nice color to the room and we're getting closer to our scene. So since this is looking good, I can, I could apply the solidify and Boolean, but first and what I'm actually going to do is tab into edit mode and add in some crown molding. And to do that, I'm going to select these edges here around the, the corners of our room, hit shift D and it duplicates them out here. Oops, kind of glitched out here. Let's just turn off the solidify modifier for now for a second. Shift D, so we've duplicated these guys. And I'm gonna hit P and separate these by selection. So now we've separated them. I can tab out of that mode back into solidify. And let's go to our guy here. I can delete these. I don't need these uh, attached to it. We'll call this the crown molding. So you'll see what this is, is basically just the edges of that top thing, but it's as a mesh. And we don't want it as a mesh actually for this because we're gonna be adding in a, a bevel uh, profile to this. And in order to do a bevel profile, you actually need a curve instead of a mesh to be able to apply that bevel too. And so we're gonna just convert this very easily by going to object, convert to, and we're convert it from a curve or from a mesh to a curve. So now I hit that. And now you can see it's changed the icon here from that triangle to the little uh, pasta noodle, <laughs> this is this uh, curve for the crown molding, and actually change that triangle to the little curve that you see here. And that actually opens up all new properties for us to adjust. And the one we're particularly interested in is located under the geometry tab. Scroll down a little bit. Here's this bevel one. And we're going to be using an object to bevel this. Now, if you've ever seen crown molding before, it's kind of got this like interesting little pattern to it, you know, kind of a little bit of in and out edges and stuff to it. So you can actually pull up a, a reference image of, of a, a crown molding online. Just type into Google crown molding. A lot of these images are copyrighted, so I can't particularly direct you to a download for them. Um, but one way to Im import something into Blender as, as a reference is just to go to image and then reference. Let's go to top down mode here. Let's go to seven image and then let's type a reference. I'm going to navigate to this image I've saved of a bevel profile. That's kind of interesting. And I don't need to be in render mode here for now. I've got this kind of reference image here and I'm going to go over and I'm going to be trying to trace out this guy right here. And this gets a little bit tricky sometimes. So just kind of bear with me here. It's a little bit of a tedious process to kind of trace these guys out, um, but it's, it's worth it if you take the time to actually work through this and, and make it look really nice. So I'm going to just pull this down. So I've got a bit more space to work with and let's go to shift a curve and I'm just going to add in a point because I actually kind of like to start with these points here. So you're not really seeing it because it's located at the origin. I'm going to pull this over so it's in line with the bottom right corner of our reference here. Let's we're in edit mode here now. And what we can actually do is hit E to extrude this point out and add some extra geometry. And you can kind of pull it around here. And we're going to want to isolate this movement to the Y axis. So I'm going to hit G and Y and just pull this up so that it is at that top point there. So now we've got that. I'm going to extrude it again and pull it. Oops extrude it and just pull it on the x-axis over to here. So now we're lined up there. Extrude it once more, pull it down on the y-axis again. This is just how we get started here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go to this guy over here and extrude it. Oops. Extrude it along the x-axis as well. So we've got our profile started here. Now is the fun part. Fun in air quotes here. This is always kind of tedious to do, to be honest with you. Um, but what we're going to do is extrude this guy out here and just pull it oh, with G and then shift Z it just to constrain that motion to uh, the one axis and just pulling these kind of control points here. You can see you can add some bending bending to it and just I'm going to select this guy over here and kind of even out that bending a bit by pulling this all the way into that origin point. It doesn't have to be exact. You know, we're just trying to get somewhat close to the profile that we're working off of here. I'm just going to pull this one in here to start because I already know that's going to be kind of funky. And you can see it's really funky, but that's okay. We're going to fix this one out here. Uh, so this one is the one that we want to pull in. And we're going to pull this over to like right there. And that's kind of smoothed it out. It's looking pretty nice. And this guy, I'm going to adjust this one all the way to about the middle there. 
hit that, and then let's go down just on the Y. You can see it's, it's kind of going crazy again. Let's just pull this down here, it's fine. And we're gonna extrude this once more, and I'm just going to connect it up uh, close enough to this. And let's zoom in a bit more here so we can see what we're working with. This is kind of getting a little bit out of line. And let's pull this over here. This is a really funky one. There we go, it's a bit better. It's looking a bit more reasonable. Let's pull these two over here. This is just a little pull and push here, guys. Uh, it always takes a little bit of time to kind of get these nailed in right, just moving little uh, you know, edges of these ones so that they're all good and proper. So that's looking pretty much close to it. You know, this is it's almost good enough. I'm, I'm almost pretty happy with this, frankly. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact, but that looks pretty good. And let's just select these two last points together and hit F. Oops, it cannot make that a segment. That's sad. Um, what is going on here? Should usually be able to make it a segment. Maybe I'm selecting the wrong points here. Oh yeah, I'm probably selecting the wrong point. Yeah. Let me just pull this over here. Select this point and select this point. Can't make a segment. Can I make that a segment? Oh, why can't I make you a segment? Well, you get to see behind the scenes here. It's always fun to... <laughs> mess around with these guys. Let's just pull this down here so it's basically in line. Okay, this is close enough. I mean, it's fine if there's a little bit of a gap to it. So I'm good with this reference. I can delete it and you can see what we've created. We've got this kind of interesting bevel profile to our scene here. I'm just going to rename this from point to uh, the crown molding profile. And what we're going to do is actually use this as our bevel profile and wrap it around this top part of the room. And so I'm going to click back on our crown molding here go down to the bevel profile, and it's the only one available since it's the only other curve in our scene. And you can see it's massive, and it's also flipped the wrong way. So if it's flipped the wrong way, just click on the crown molding, tab into edit mode, go to segments, and then switch direction. And that's looking really funky because the thing is pretty massive. So if I scale this down a lot, uh, it looks a lot more natural in our room. It's looking pretty good. But you can see it's kind of hovering in space. So I'm just gonna pull this down Let's go to three on our numpad so we can see it. Pull this down so it's fitting in the room. Now you see it's starting to appear in our room over here in the top corners. It's looking pretty nice. That's maybe a little bit out of the frame still. If you pull that down, there we go. Now it's in there. It's a little bit small, so I'm going to try to scale this up. But to do that first, I'm going to go to object and then set the origin to the center of mass so that this point is there. And I'm just going to hit shift and Z and just kind of pull this down a bit. Let's pull this into the room again. So now we've got our interesting bevel profile there and it's nice crown molding profile in our scene. So that's looking pretty nice. And we can work with that now. So we've got all of our scene elements here. Now it's just about tweaking some details and getting the colors right in our scene. So if you remember, I kind of did this like bluish hue to my scene and I'm going to do that again for this guy. But first let's bring in that last texture that we had, which is that plaster texture. And for this, I'm just going to go to material mode so we can actually see what we're working with here again pull this guy up, the shader editor up a bit more so I can see a bit more of our scene. Let's switch this from world to object and we're gonna call this our uh, plaster material here. So I'm just gonna hit Control Shift T again and our last texture, ba -da -da -da, drum roll please, is our concrete one. So we're gonna be bringing in these uh, for the principal texture setup. That's looking pretty good. Um, but you'll see it's kind of stretched out and looks massive. And this is one of the errors I notice, I notice a lot in, in beginners with Blender is you're getting your texture scaling wrong. Uh, if you look at a wall in a building, you know, the texture is usually not going to look this stretched out and huge. So you actually need to rescale this a bit. And to do that, I'm going to tab into edit mode, I select everything here. And then just first of all, um, actually, first of all, we need to actually apply our solidify in order to do this. Let's apply the solidify modifier and also apply that Boolean modifier. So now we have all of our geometry here cut out. I'm going to select everything and then go to U, Smart UV Project, and hit OK. Let's go to our UV editor and you'll see it's really small. And this is where we're getting that error. You know, this is texture meant to be, you know, pretty small in our scene, but you can see it's really stretched out. Like this is the door frame here, this piece here, this block corresponds to this back wall here. And so we want this to be much larger. So I'm just going to hit S3 scaled up by three and that's looking a bit better. Let's maybe scale up just a little bit more. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, and I'm going to go back to render mode here. And, you know, it's looking really dark in our scene. And that's because of this base color here. I'm actually just going to disconnect this. 
because I want to control this color. And oftentimes I don't really necessarily like the color that these textures come with. And I kind of like to kind of control it my way. And you kind of get enough texture variation to begin with uh, already off the bat with uh, your, um, you know, your normal maps and other stuff that are roughness that are applied on there. It kind of takes some of the color from that HDRI into the scene, into effect, uh, and works out that way a bit more. I'm noticing that the crown molding is a bit scaled weird, so I'm just going to scale this over so that it is uh, in line with our wall properly there. Scale a little bit more. That's looking good. And it's a little bit off the wall here. We do not want that. So let's just pull this back just a hair. And that is looking good. Just little tweaks, little details. It's important to keep an eye on. Um, okay, so I've unplugged this and remember I kind of went for like a bluish texture to the room. Uh, I'm gonna do that again. Let's just add in like a slight like bluish hue to the room. Kind of like this slight turquoise color here. Ever so slightly, let's add that in to our room. And that's looking pretty cool. Um, and I'm actually gonna add the same texture to the crown molding of our scene. This plaster texture will add it to the, the door as well and to the other frame and then to this middle frame here as well. That plaster texture added in there and that's looking pretty cool. We kind of got this like mint green color. <laughs> Let's maybe make this a little bit more blue. That's looking much better. Um, so the last step here is actually going to be importing in that uh, image that I had where you've saved that image. I've labeled this one Marseille and it is this guy right here. So import it as a plane with a mission uh, checked off here. And what you can do is now scale this up and pull it back. So it's now the background of your scene. And that's looking pretty nice. But you'll notice that it's kind of clipping off our light here. And what's happening is it's actually uh, accepting shadows from lights in our environment. We don't want that. We want the light to be able to pass through this plane as if it wasn't there. And in order to do that is to click on this kind of square object properties thing that you see here. Go down to ray visibility for your sky. Let's just label this to sky and turn off shadow. So now you'll see it's it's looking more natural, but it's looking quite dark, you know, and our lighting is really bright here. So to adjust that, let's just crank up the emission to something like four. And so that's looking much more natural. We've kind of got this nice like sky blue color that matches with our uh, surrounding terrain. I'm noticing that the sand is looking a little bit too displaced and it's also looking kind of shiny for some reason to me here. And to fix that, I'm actually going to adjust the roughness of this sand a bit here in both our sand dunes here and also in the sand that's kind of being scattered on the surface of our uh, wood planks. So let me just go to the roughness here. I'm going to pull over the principal BSDF a bit so we have more space. Add in a color ramp node and I'm just going to pull the white point down quite a bit here so it's almost intersecting with the, the uh, black portion. And if I zoom in here you can see the difference between the one that's just uh, untouched as it is and the new one that we're adjusting here and if I pull this over even more you'll see it just takes out that shine in it's from it. it's kind of making the sand look a little bit wet uh, originally I kind of wanted to look a bit dried out so it's been there for I don't know how long for years collecting in this corner I'm just going to really crunch that down in the color ramp let's also change that in our tab here where we have both the sand and the wood on the plane add in that color ramp node and let's just pull in this guy all the way here so this is looking pretty awesome. We've got a really nice scene going here. And, you know, I'm just gonna add in those volumetrics if you remember that properly. So I've talked about volumetrics a lot in other videos. Uh, so I'm not really gonna go too in depth with that here. If you wanna watch uh, some of the other videos that I posted out about volumetrics, absolutely go for it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great details that I cover in it. For this one, I'm just gonna be kind of going on a general overview of how to do this. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is just add in a mesh and a cube. And we're just going to scale this up so it encompasses the entire scene. Kind of push it back a little bit here, maybe scale up a bit more. And you'll see it's kind of blocking out everything. You're just seeing this huge cube. So I actually want to be able to see my scene still. So I'd like to go down to the viewport display and just switch it to uh, wired from texture. You'll see it's still gray there. And in order to actually make it look like it's part of the scene is to add in a volume material to this. So let's just label our things because we should always be labeling our layers. It's important to keep tabs of what we're working with. Uh, so we're not getting lost in all of these cube one, cube two, cube infinity. And I'm just going to add in a principled volume to this, and we're going to connect the material volume to the volume output. And you'll see it's looking incredibly dense. We're at a density of one, so that's way too much. And first, let me just turn up this brightness a bit here, add like a slight orangish hue to it. And let's pull this back to like 0.1. Now you're actually starting to see the scene a bit better, but it's still like incredibly dense. It looks like some kind of dust storms rolling through here, which is maybe a bit much. If we go below 0.1, 
This is looking a bit better, still maybe a bit too dusty. Let me go down to like 0 0.005. And that's looking pretty cool to me. I really think we've got kind of this nice haziness to the scene. Uh, and it's really starting to look pretty nice. It's looking a little bit washed out though. So in order to do a little bit of adjustment in Blender, you can actually go to your color management properties and change the look to something like medium high contrast or you know high contrast. It adds a little bit more contrast to your scene and kind of brings out a bit more of the elements. So this is looking pretty awesome. Uh, you know, this was a pretty quick piece to put together. We did a little bit of modeling. We did a little bit of texturing and lighting, and we had a lot of fun along the way. You know, for render settings, if you're using your GPU, I recommend uh, enabling a really great add-on uh, that's under the performance one, which is auto tile size, and it auto detects, you know, the optimal number of uh, squares that it should be using when it's, or tiles that it should be using rather to render out your scene. Uh, it's a really great thing to do. So it kind of takes out some of the guesswork for you. Uh, if you're kind of new to rendering settings, you know, Blender, you can kind of get a little bit lost in some of these settings. Uh, I feel like, you know, for a new person going into this, it, it's a little bit uh, tough to kind of parse through these. So I recommend just turning on the auto tile size for this with your GPU if you've got that going. If you don't, you can always do CPU rendering. I won't judge. It's all right. You know, we're all working with what we got here. I've got a whole video about optimizing render settings and also optimizing your uh, viewport editing as well too in another video i've linked that in the description here as well if you wanted to watch that and learn a bit more about how to optimize your scenes while you're actually working in the viewport no matter what computer you're using so that's very helpful too but hopefully you learned something from this you know this is a tutorial i've been meaning to do for a while here i really had a lot of fun putting this together and i'm excited to see what you guys come up with with this a couple cool new tips and tricks kind of an interesting spin on the iconic sand ring tutorial i put together before uh so if you like what you saw here, please leave a like. It helps me out immensely. Share this with your friends. And if you're not already subscribed, which I know a lot of you aren't, smash that subscribe button so you can be notified when I upload new videos again. And I will catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in.